Hey you guys, uh, so today I want to talk about ammunition. In my quest or my journey as a new gun owner, uh, one of the most overwhelming things is ammo. And heaven forbid if you go on the Google and ask what the best ammunition is, you have all kinds of people fighting about everything. And I hope you can tell from my notes and my videos, I don't like to fight, I'm just learning. Uh, uh, but I did use science and numbers and spreadsheets and research to come up with a ranking system and a score of what I definitively say what is the best bullet. Uh, I'll kind of walk you through that right now. Uh, hint, the answer is really technically it depends on what you want it for. But I do have a ranking and a score system and a clear winner when it comes to this. So I'll walk you through my logic as I talk about the 9mm, our friend here, trusty old 9mm. I don't have a 40 caliber bullet or a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson, so I can't show you one of those. Uh, I do have a 10 millimeter though, which has the same diameter uh, compared to the nine here. So it's a little bit bigger. Uh, 357 SIG is very similar to nine millimeter in diameter. Here's the nine millimeter, come on. There's the nine, here's the 357 SIG. 357 SIG is a tad bit taller, neck down a little bit here at the top, but same diameter. Really kind of an interesting uh, bullet here. We'll talk about that guy in another video I did on my 357 SIG, SIG P320. Uh, next, I got old fatties, I like to call him. I love my 45 ACP, and he's a chunky one. I uh, like this guy a lot. Compared to 9mm, you'll see he's a little smaller. Not quite as tall. Definitely not as big around. This 45 makes some really big holes in paper. So, like him a lot. Sorry for the bad video, though. And last but not least is this 10 millimeter, which is an interesting cartridge. Uh, he's bigger than nine millimeter by one. He's one more. So he's a little taller, a little bigger round, but compared to the 45 ACP, about the same height. 45 maybe a little bit taller and definitely a little bigger around. But anyway, we're talking about all these guys and got a ranking system here. I've listed uh, all the bullets, both in millimeter and inches, because the system is so confusing, because sometimes you're talking millimeters, like nine millimeters. Sometimes you're talking inches, like 40 Smith & Wesson. And sometimes, in the case of 357 SIG, it's nothing. It's nine millimeters in diameter, but it's 35.5, or 0.355 inches. Nothing in 357. 357 refers to why the bullet was designed to compete with a 357 Magnum. So anyway, you didn't come here for history bullets. You came here to see who the winner is, and that's what I'm going to tell you. So uh, I'll start with kind of looking at research down the line. I looked up uh, the range or weight for each bullet and tried to find the maximum. Hopefully, I got these right with the eight, with the 45 being the heaviest and the nine millimeter being the lightest of all the bullets. 357 SIG is pretty close. Then I went through and looked at velocity um, and just ranked them. 357 SIG is the highest, followed by the 10 millimeter. Yada, 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 with the big old fat boy having the lowest velocity. I think that's not surprising anybody. Muzzle energy, again, off the internet, got these rankings uh, with the 10 millimeter being quite a bit higher than all the others in 357 SIG. Both these guys, there's comments about how much pressure is in each bullet and the stress on the barrels. Uh, they did a power ranking, and the power ranking is simply math of me multiplying the muzzle energy times the velocity times the weight times the size. How big of a hole does it make when it hits and how hard does it hit? Uh, and that power ranking, um, you know, the 9, the 40, and the 45 are all pretty darn close. Eh. And the 357 SIG is better than those guys, and the 10 millimeter is way more powerful. So that was interesting. I'll show you why I did that in a second. Then I went through and tried to assign a ranking system, a scoring system, 1 through 5, with 5 being the best score. Uh, so size-wise, the biggest bullet is the 45. It gets 5 points. Uh, second place would be the 40 and the 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter tied for second, so they'd get four points each. Uh, and then last place would be the 357 SIG and 9 millimeter. They make the same size hole. I did that for size, for weight, uh, where the 45 is the biggest, uh, the heaviest, and the 9 millimeter is the lightest. Same for velocity, where the 357 SIG is the highest, followed by the 10 and the 9. And then muzzle energy. Did that ranking as well with 10 millimeter, followed by the 357 and 9 again. And then did the power ranking, that this ranking, this uh, calculation that earlier, I just rank those one through five for another number on here. And that power ranking, uh, the 10 millimeter one, uh, all the way down to the nine millimeter. So they kind of ranked in that order. That summed all those up. I summed up the power plus the energy plus the velocity plus the weight plus the size and added all those together, and the winner was the 10 millimeter. 
followed by 357 SIG, closely by the 45. The 40 Smith & Wesson and dead last is nine millimeter. That's the most popular you know, ammo in the world. But then I thought about real world application because you know, price matters, availability matters, how much you can carry matters. So then I went through and kind of ranked those metrics and looked at price. Well, the cheapest ammo of all of them, and they're all expensive now, but the cheapest is nine millimeter, followed by the 40 Smith & Wesson and the 45. Those two could almost be a tie, honestly. Um, and then, uh, actually I'll make those a tie. Real, real time adjustment here. Um, so I'll tie those guys up. And then um, 10 millimeter coming in next to last. And 357 coming in dead last because that crap's expensive. I got a gun, I can't shoot it because the bullets are so high. Then I uh, looked at availability. You can now find 9mm almost anywhere. I've got a pretty good stash of it. Uh, as well as 45. They made this stuff for 100 years and they still they make lots of it. So you, you pretty well find 45. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, 40 is pretty regular, pretty common. 10mm uh, is a little harder to find. A little, Customized, and I only found 357 SIG at one store. So I kind of rank those. That's my own scoring. Your stores at home may be different. And finally, capacity. How much can the guns hold? The 9mm and 357 SIG should hold about the same amount of ammo, followed by the 40 and the 10, and uh, the big old fat boy 45 come in last with capacity. Then I added all those together. I added up the all things equal subtotal here, plus price, plus availability, plus capacity, and got a final score. And that is your Rank, final ranking order, folks, with the winner being the 10 millimeter, followed by a tie for second with the nine and the 40 Smith and Wesson, and the 45 actually. So tie for tie for second, really, saying the 45, the 40, and the nine millimeter are pretty much all equal, and 357 Sig is slightly behind those two. So these guys are all pretty darn close, with a major lead to the 10 millimeter. Now, I know that's not the case. Nine millimeter is is really good. You can't talk about stopping power. I don't talk about penetration, all these things, accuracy. Um, so lots of other things come into play, but when I ranked it, that was my score. Uh, so uh, I'll be glad to get a 10 millimeter soon and shoot that one so I can compare it to my 45 and the 357 SIG and the nine. And I guess one day I'm gonna have to buy a 40 Smith & Wesson too, so I can try all of them. Uh, but you know, if all things being equal, if I had one gun, it all depends on your gun too, right? If I had one gun that would shoot everything, let's say it's a SIG 226 that I was able to shoot in five different um, um, ammunition sizes, I'll probably grab 10 millimeter every single time because that seems like a really good bullet. It's accurate, it's big, it's powerful. Um, so I would go with the 10 first, followed by the 357 SIG, then the 45 ACP. Yeah, that's what I would do, but I own more nine millimeters than anything else. I have more am more nine millimeter ammo than anything else. But if I if all things been equal, I'd probably choose the ten as well, followed by the three fifty seven, then the forty five. But I can't find this stuff, uh, so I'll stick to my forty five right now because he's a good he's a good gun. So anyway, that was fun. Hope you enjoyed it.